Good morning. I declare the 2018 commencement for Notre Dame of Maryland University now open. Please remain standing for the invocation by GBK Nandwaya, class of 2018, and America the Beautiful, led by Kelsey Hunt, class of 2018. We invite you to join the singing with the words on the last page of your program. Good and gracious God, it is true your love and kindness that we have reached this momentous occasion, the commencement of our graduating class with Notre Dame of Maryland University. We are thankful for the strength and fortitude you bestowed on us throughout our education which prepares us as leaders who can transform the world. We are humbled by your generous gifts of beauty, truth, and goodness. We call upon your eternal wisdom to be with us through this gathering, through this ceremony, and through our lives. We ask for your continued blessings of peace, joy, justice, and love. May our lives proclaim your goodness, our works give you honor, and our voices celebrate you forever. Loving God, as your daughters and sons, we call on you to be an ever-abiding presence in our lives, now and always. Amen. Please be seated. On behalf of President Mary Lou Liam, the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff of the university, and especially on behalf of our graduating students, I welcome families and friends to the 123rd commencement of Notre Dame of Maryland University. I also welcome our distinguished speaker, Dr. Susan Love. Before we begin, a few matters of protocol. First, as a courtesy to our graduates and other guests, please silence all electronic devices. Second, if you are taking photographs or recording today's momentous event, follow the directions of the ushers and take care not to block the view of others. This is a joyous celebration, 
and we want to recognize the hard work and achievement of every graduate. Therefore, as names are called, we ask you to be respectful of other graduates and their guests. If at any time you need assistance, our university personnel are easily, easily identified by their blue shirts and gold name plates among, with, among the other arena staff. Now to confer today's first degree, I present President Mary Lou Yam, who will have the honor of awarding the Doctor of Humane Letters to our commencement speaker. Here to introduce our honoree is Dr. Jocelyn McKeon, professor in the chemistry department at Notre Dame. Susan M. Love, MD, MBA, has dedicated her professional life to the eradication of breast cancer. As Chief Visionary Officer of Dr. Susan Love Research Foundation, she oversees an innovative research program centered on breast cancer cause and prevention. She is also a clinical professor of surgery at UCLA's David Geffen School of Medicine. One of the founders of the National Breast Cancer Coalition, Dr. Love is well known as a trusted guide to women worldwide through the foundation's Inpatient Science Education Program and her books, including Dr. Susan Love's Breast Book, now in its sixth edition. The foundation's recent groundbreaking initiatives include the Army of Women, developed to partner women and scientists to accelerate translational research and the Health of Women, How study, an online cohort study aimed at identifying the cause of breast cancer. Among the Foundation's collaborative research projects are the development of an NIH-funded self-reading ultrasound technology for triage of palpable breast lumps, an analysis of the anatomy of the breast ductal system, and an investigation into the microbiome of the breast ducts. Dr. Love attended our beloved College of Notre Dame starting in 1966 and finished her degree at Thomas More College of Fordham University. She received her medical degree from SUNY Downstate Medical Center in New York. She trained at Boston's Beth Israel Hospital was an early member of the Multidisciplinary Breast Center at Dana-Farber Cancer Center, and founded the Faulkner Breast Center and the Revlon UCLA Breast Center. She received her business degree from the Executive MBA program at UCLA's Anderson School of Management. Dr. Love, you would be pleased to know that our science program remains strong, just as it was when you attended Notre Dame. We still empower our students and build their confidence in the unique Notre Dame way to ensure they are well equipped to tackle their chosen careers and pursue their passions. And most certainly, the School Sisters of Notre Dame remain an exceptional role model for all of us. Dr. Love, you are an extraordinary physician who has used your gifts and talents in the sciences and the medical profession in the interests of women's health. You have been known internationally for your important research, and you have been a committed and generous benefactor of our university, for which we are deeply grateful. We are pleased to honor you today and to welcome you to this auspicious occasion. So, for the courage and foresight of her groundbreaking research in breast cancer cause and prevention, and for her inspirational work in education and health care, Notre Dame of Maryland University is pleased to award the Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa to Dr. Susan Love on this 20th day of May, 2018. By virtue of the powers conferred on this corporation by the General Assembly of the State of Maryland, 
we do hereby proclaim as Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causer, Dr. Susan Love, that all the rights and privileges attached to this degree be preserved unto her. We have issued this letter patent from our hand, sealed with the official seal of the university on this 20th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2018. Thank you so much. It really is a great honor to be here. I've attended many schools, as you heard, and I've received um, honorary degrees before, but this one is the most important because Notre Dame of Maryland is my alma mater. I didn't graduate here, but this is a school that embraced me in 1966 when I arrived as an 18-year-old from Mexico City. At Notre Dame, I learned to smoke, play bridge, <laughs> do research in biology, and to be an adult. It is truly my alma mater, or the mother of my soul, and for that I will be forever grateful. As I contemplated what I wanted to say to you graduates, families, and friends, I realized I could sum it up with the importance of the three R's, the basics not reading, writing, and arithmetic. Actually, I've never quite figured out how they got three R's when arithmetic and writing don't start with R. But I mean the three R's that are critical to stay relevant as you go through life. Resiliency, reinvention, and relationships. In fact, Notre Dame of Maryland itself embodies these values. The School Sisters of Notre Dame started out from Germany to Baltimore in 1873 and founded Notre Dame of Maryland Collegiate Institute, which in 1895 became the College of Notre Dame, the first Catholic college for girls in the United States to award bachelor's degrees. There were six women in that first graduating class a hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago, and look at you all now. In the 1970s, they reevaluated their mission, leading to an addition of the continuing education program in 72, the weekend college in 75. While I admire, what I admire is that they didn't try to be like every other college or university. They did the research, figured out what they thought was needed and where there was a need, and filled it. They did it again, adding the graduate studies program, and since then they've added the pharmacy school, the first ever created by a women's college. I'm so proud of my alma mater. She continues to serve as an example to all of us in the, in the importance of resilience. Resilience, reinvention, and relationship are the key to staying relevant, and many of you are experienced with at least one of these. You may have come back to school to finish your degree or get a new one, reinventing yourself with the strong support of your relationships with teachers, families, and friends. In fact, today is as much about them, the people who stood next to you, behind you, and cheered you on, as it is about you. You couldn't have done it without them. As most of you know, life rarely goes in a straight line. We start out on one path or goal, and then we find it's blocked, and we move to a different one. Or the goal isn't blocked, but it's just not relevant anymore. When I was at Notre Dame, there was one pay phone in the hall. Now we carry our phones in our pockets, and a message is a text. So being a phone repairman is probably not a good career anymore. Life is full of surprises. You know, we head off in one direction, and we find out that another path is beckoning. 
While at Notre Dame, I was inspired to see if I had a vocation to become a nun and left to become a postulant at the SSND Mother House in Wilton, Connecticut. They sent me to Fordham in a habit, which was a little weird in the 60s when everybody else was um, burning their bras. Um, <laughs> I didn't last very long, actually. <laughs> And I had to pause, reevaluate, and reinvent myself, and decided to be a pre med student. There were still quotas, 5 to 10 percent, for the number of women in medical schools and law schools in those days. Um, and they, in fact, Title IX got rid of the quotas in the law schools and the medical schools before it started, they used it for sports. But you could only, they would only accept 5 or 10 percent women. Nevertheless, I persisted, and I finished medical school at um, SUNY Downstate in New York. I wanted to be a surgeon, but nobody really wanted a woman surgeon. And I was lucky to find a spot that would take me um, at Beth Israel Hospital in Boston. I finished, I did my surgical training. I was chief resident, which is you know, supposed to be the big thing. And then nobody offered me a job. It was like, you know. Here I am, all trained up and ready to go. So I rented an office, hung up a shingle, and waited. I did a lot of crossword puzzles those first six months. But eventually, patients started coming. And the ones that really came were the women. And pretty soon, I found that, realized that they weren't being treated very well, the women with breast cancer, and that nobody was really explaining to them what was going on in their bodies, what their choices are, and what could happen. And so well, I started out really focusing only on breast cancer. Um, people always ask me, the media is always asking me, did you become a breast surgeon because your mother died of breast cancer? Which she didn't. I say, no, it was sexism, pure and simple. But it's an example that shows that you have to take advantage of everything. Even the things that seem like they're bad can turn out in your favor. I, I soon wrote Dr. Susan Love's breast book in 1990, and um, the reason they wanted it to be Dr. Susan Love's breast book is they didn't want to have cancer in the title, God forbid, and they, didn't, they wanted everybody to know it was written by a woman doctor. Um, and so the publishers put that on the title. And it's come out, it's now in six, it had six editions, and it's been translated into many languages. I couldn't get anybody to translate it into Spanish, so I did that one myself, but it is available in Spanish as well. With the internet, things are changing, and I don't think there'll be a seventh edition of Dr. Susan Love's Breast Book. We'll have to think of a new way to explain things and to educate people. Resilience is important. In 1990, the women's movement was going on, and we started the breast cancer advocacy movement, modeled after the AIDS movement. It's been very popular. But I must admit, when the NFL is wearing pink, I think we've achieved awareness. <laughs> I don't think we need to focus on that anymore. <laughs> I, I really think that um, what we need to do is reevaluate and refocus and figure out the cause of breast cancer and how to prevent it. When I was young, people died of cancer of the cervix. And then we figured out it was caused by a virus, and now we have a vaccine. We, so people don't get, they don't get cancer of the cervix anymore. They don't lose their fertility with a hysterectomy for an abnormal pap smear. We can do the same thing for cancer of the breast, but we have to refocus into figuring out what causes it so that we can figure out how to prevent it. And to do that, we have to study women. Now, when I say to researchers, how come you do all the research on breast cancer on rats and mice? They go, well, they're cheap, easy. <laughs> the trouble is rats and mice don't get breast cancer. So figuring out how to cure it in rats and mice really doesn't help women very much. You have to study women if you're going to figure out why women get breast cancer and how to cure it in women. My, the Dr. Susan Love Research Foundation that I founded has an army of women, as was mentioned, and it's really, it sounds very fancy, but it's really a big um, email list. And anybody can sign up, and you will hear about studies 
that are looking at breast cancer. They, you may be, they're for, some of them are for people who have breast cancer, some of them are for people who don't have breast cancer. You can read the study if you fit it, URSVP, and then we'll connect you with the researcher. Um, it's a way to really move things out of, the, out of the rodent world and into the real world so we can figure out breast cancer once and for all. And I invite you all to check it out. Research is really critical because research is the foundation of science. And the reason we call it research is because at any one time, we're only making our best guess at the moment. We have to keep researching in life and in the world as everything goes on and changes. In medicine and science, we make a hypothesis that makes sense and stay tuned. With new techniques and better tools, we learn that what we originally thought is not actually right, and we need a new approach. Previously, we thought the diagnosis of cancer was an emergency and required immediate surgery, but new studies are coming out that suggest that chemotherapy and hormone therapy may be better to give first and surgery afterwards. Does this mean that the treatments that we gave all those women in the past were wrong? Well, it means we did the best we could and we saved many lives, but the new approach is even better. And one of you may well be the one that figures out a newer approach, and even yet will enable us to prevent it. Research and reinvention are critical in our lives as, uh, and our careers, as they've been for Notre Dame of Maryland. The days of doing the same job your whole life are gone. Since I've started, I've been an entrepreneur, a researcher, an author, speaker, and now the chief visionary officer. I made that title up, of a foundation. <laughs> but you can have it if you want it. Different routes to the same goals, to figure out how breast cancer starts and how to end it and to give a voice to people with the disease. You may be just starting your career, restarting your career, or even exploring a new one. It's that ability to reinvent yourself, that resiliency that will carry you through. The future is unknown, but I would be willing to bet that artificial intelligence, which is starting to change the world, will be the next industrial revolution. It's sneaking into our lives, like when your phone looks at your email and tells you how long it's going to take you to get to that place before you even asked it. It's sneaking into our lives um, at all levels. We're using it in medicine, and um, we actually have, as was mentioned, a study funded by the NIH where we have an ultrasound you can hold over a breast lump and it'll give you a red light or a green light to triage who needs to be followed up and who doesn't. Radiologists will probably be out of a job soon with artificial intelligence and other diagnosticians. But there'll be new specialties that'll arise and new jobs that'll come, and everything will move on. Luckily, it's the third of the three R's that's the most important of all, relationships. What will get you through the challenges and changes in life are not the degrees you receive today, but your families and friends that have supported you all the way. When I was um, very far from home at Notre Dame, in the days before email, cell phones, and Facebook, my dad did a wonderful thing. He got a rubber stamp made of my address and a bunch of postcards and stamps, and he stamped all these postcards and put the stamp and put the rubber stamp address on it, and then every day in my mailbox, I had a postcard from my dad. Sometimes it said, this pen really doesn't write very well. <laughs> Love, Dad. But I always knew that I wasn't alone. Never take your relationships, your friends, your families, and mentors for granted. You never know when you'll need them or they'll need you. Six years ago, I had a routine doctor's visit, went back to my office, and I got a call from my primary care doctor saying, come right back. You have 60% blasts in your blood, and we think you have leukemia. I'm a breast cancer surgeon. I don't know anything about blood except when it spills. Um, and, and I didn't know anything about leukemia. I went right back, and within a week, I was in the hospital. Six weeks later, after chemotherapy and a bone marrow transplant from my baby sister, um, I came out, and, and luckily I'm here today. But. <laughs> But, the, but I wouldn't be here if it weren't for my family, 
my wife, my daughter, my siblings were with me. I was never alone in that hospital room. And I would not be here if I didn't have the support when I really needed it. So of all the R's, I think relationships are probably the most important. You didn't get here alone. It's thanks to the teacher who encouraged you, the boss who suggested you get more education, the relative that egged you on when you thought it was too hard, and your families who put up with you every day. That's why you're here. Remember, in the excitement of this day, to thank them. Without your relationships, you wouldn't be here. You cannot have too many people in your corner. Your family and friends are worth more than your degree. Cherish them, thank them, pay it forward, acting as cheerleaders for your spouse, your friends, your children, and your employees. In a world where it's easy to insult someone with a tweet, we all need to make sure that we give praise and support where it's due, and even when it's not. When the chips are down, it won't be your degrees or your accomplishments that matter, but your relationships, the people who love you and who you love that will carry you through. So remember the three R's, resilience, reinvention, and relationships. And go forth, graduates, and change the world. If you don't do it, who will? If not now, when? Show us what you can do. The world is waiting. Thank you, Dr. Love, for inspiring our graduates with your insights. As we celebrate our students' achievements, we also have a faculty member that we would like to honor publicly. Every year since 1976, the university has selected one faculty colleague for the Mullen Distinguished Teaching Award. Students and colleagues nominate faculty for their ability to foster students' development and relate course material to the real world, as well as their contributions to the university and the community. By tradition, the announcement of the winner is kept a surprise, even for the recipient. This year's recip recipient epitomizes the purpose of the Mullen Award. Graduate and undergraduate students praise this faculty member for the ability to create an open and trusting atmosphere in which to discuss diverse and difficult topics. Students also acknowledge they are intellectually challenged and engaged. They feel exceptionally well prepared to begin and to advance their careers. Colleagues state this faculty member wholeheartedly embraces service learning and thus shares their passion to have students become agents of change, able to transform themselves and the world. We are proud to announce that Dr. Stephanie Savick is the winner of the 2018 <laughs> Moen Distinguished Teaching Award. Dr. Savick has been a member of the School of Education for eight years. She organizes and leads the 19 professional development schools where annually more than 200 new educators examine their profession with more experienced and successful mentor teachers. Dr. Savick's research and knowledge of culturally responsive teaching has also been the basis for several faculty development forums. Additionally, she serves on the Board of Autism Society of Baltimore, where she organizes monthly meetings and supports groups and assists in planning an annual conference. Dr. Savick is a valued and respected member of our university. Congratulations, Dr. Savick.
Now we have come to the moment you have all been waiting for, the conferring of degrees on our newest graduates. Will all the candidates from all degrees and certificates please rise as the title of your diploma is called and then remain standing. Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. Master of, Master of Arts and Masters of Science. Certificate of Advanced Study in Education. Doctor of Pharmacy. And Doctor of Philosophy. President Yam, on behalf of the faculty, it is my pleasure to present to you all those students who have successfully completed the required course of study as candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Science, Certificate of Advanced Studies in Education, Doctor of Pharmacy, and Doctor of Philosophy. By virtue of the authority vested by the General Assembly of the State of Maryland in the Board of Trustees of Notre Dame of Maryland University and by them delegated to me, I accept the candidates here and present and such other candidates in absentia presented by the faculty for the degrees and do hereby admit them to said degrees with all rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Candidates, please be seated. Degrees will be awarded beginning with the candidates of the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. In a right of investiture, Saria Coma will, Comer will represent the 2018 undergraduate studying graduating classes and receive from President Yam the academic hood that symbolizes the achievement of the baccalaureate degree. Students receiving the bachelor's degree, please stand to put your hoods while Zaria is hooded on the stage, and please remain standing. Students, please be seated until ushered to the stage. We begin with students receiving their degrees from the School of Arts, Sciences, and Business. Names of graduates will be read by Dr. Pamela O'Brien, professor and chair within the School of Arts, Sciences, and Business. As a representative of the School of Arts, Sciences, and Business, I am honored to read the names of our graduates. Bethlehem H. Adera. Tamara Akife Mariana. Elizabeth Claire Baylog, cum laude. Brianne E. Basket. Therese Lamicha Diane Blake, cum laude. Aubrey Marie Briggs. Catherine Marie Brzezinski. Gail Maureen Boris Caldamo. 
Micah Joy Oriel Costella, summa cum laude. Sarah Alyssa Coleman. Zaria Amari Comer. Caitlin Marie Connor. Victoria Grace Cox, cum laude. Mary Pamela Crawford, summa cum laude. Laura Sutorius Dinder, summa cum laude. Shannon Sharice Edwards, magna cum laude. Stephanie Martin Ehrlich, cum laude. Tammy Melissa Elliott. Sierra Janae Ferrer, cum laude. Jervon Danielle Fox. Shannon Michelle Garnett. Sharon Michelle Garnett. Lindsay Grace Gavin. Sydney Gettier. Robin Wanjiro Githweye. Christina Renee Gray. Lauren Michelle Grolo. Ashley Marie Guy, magna cum laude. Susan Ward Hahn. Emily Renee Hallmeyer, magna cum laude. Sarah Lynn Hawkins, magna cum laude. Markel R. Hayes. And before I announce the next graduate, I would actually like to invite Deborah, Dr. Deborah Franklin, Dean of the School of Arts, Science, and Business, to join President Yam on the stage so that she may present the next diploma to her grandniece. Kelsey Elaine Hunt, magna cum laude. Melissa Braswell Johnson. Jean Jun. Jessica Kasongo Kunye Payal, summa cum laude. Pawandeep Kerr. Itaka Dubi Labule. Emily Elizabeth La Martina. Jessica Francis Lobello. Brianna Christine Lucas. Lori Marie Lynn. Peggy Gian Marie Mangan. Elizabeth Lee Marnelli. Dana Kiana Mars. Radine Tanara McCullough, magna cum laude. Daishana L. McNeil. Samantha Nicole Malik. Jessica Oduiz Julie Ngata. Christina Janelle Newton. A. B. Ohio. Christine Colette Regine. Judith Oyedele, Mary Elizabeth Preby, uh, summa cum laude. William H. Rue, Jr., magna cum laude. Rebecca Lynn Rothies, magna cum laude. Diane Yvonne Segastome, magna cum laude. Catherine Janae Salim, magna cum laude. Jessica Francis Shiner. Ruth Bequine, Sophie, cum laude. Diana Patricia Liz Cabrera, cum laude. Jordan Nicole Sopa. Serena Aslam Soter. Wakitu Jefferson Spriggs, cum laude. Ala 
Christine Stepanov. Courtney Ann Strength, summa cum laude. Farhia Ahmed Syed, summa cum laude. Dania Simone Taylor. Foster A. Obama. Caitlin Marie Walter. Raquel Joy Warbington, magna cum laude. Morgan Amanda Ward. Lindsay Marie Webb, magna cum laude. Allison Mary Whitaker. Molly Elizabeth Wolanski, magna cum laude. Maria Pauline Lorraine Yetamitana. Jin He Yi, magna cum laude. Joseph Brandon Young, magna cum laude. Is that it? Names of students receiving the bachelor's degree from the School of Education will be read by Dr. Gary Thrift, Acting Dean of the School of Education. As representative of the School of Education, I am honored to read the names of our graduates. Danielle Rebecca Amster, magna cum laude. J. Trené Lynn Bryant, summa cum laude. Krista Ann Buccelli. Rebecca Lynn Butner. Gustavo Coronado, magna cum laude. Ashley Chanel Fleet. Melissa Elizabeth Ford, magna cum laude. Emily Lynn Gambrel, magna cum laude. Lauren Brooke Helms, summa cum laude. James M. Horton. Ariel Marina Johnson, magna cum laude. Sharon Marie Cappen. Megan L. Kenzierski. Caitlin Elizabeth Kramer, magna cum laude. Karama Moreni Lee. Catherine M. McLean, summa cum laude. Danielle Marie Merrill. Madison Mildenberger. Grace Henju Park. Magna cum laude. Victoria Lynn Selevsky. Magna cum laude. Alyssa May Santos. Sarah Nicole Satoski. Neimani Renee Staley. 
Amanda Marie Tepper, magna cum laude. Amy Catherine Voguli, summa cum laude. Hannah Catherine Walker, cum laude. Jawanda R. Wiggins Carter. Name of, names of the students receiving the bachelor's degree from the School of Nursing will be read by Dr. Marlene Thornton, Associate Dean of the School of Nursing. As representative of the School of Nursing, I'm honored to read the names of our graduates. Jasmine Blake. Ashley Nicole Bloom. Rachel Nicole Bourne. Elizabeth Marie Brooks. Brianna Marie Bushman. Heather Michelle Canales. Valentina Mercedes Conchania. Marianne Tarona Carpio. Tanika Chanel Carter. Elizabeth Clariza Chambers. Kristen Alice Crest. Carolyn Swick. Madeline Marie Dooling. Sheila Diocos de los Santos. Takesha Nicole Franklin. Christina Mary Gosney. Benita Gita Gregorzak. Shannon Ann Hatsi George Gallus. Maureen Elizabeth Higgins. Linda Norris Halsey. Sarah Lynn Hughes. Gozi Bakago Iwadiki. Claudia Lynn Jacobs. Natalie Jarian. Jarzy Carnley. Alexander Marie Kuczynski. Marie Gabrielle Lanza. Elizabeth Moran Marshall. Kelsey Ann Mitchell. Alicia Hazida Mohammed. Keisha Moss. Ann Navin. Amy Ng. <laughs> Jane Najiri Njari. Mm -hmm. Silas Najay. Naj Alondra Juliana Paz. Barbara Denise Reed. Brittany Nicole Raymer. Jennifer Lynn Riley. Karen Kimberly Moniz Ruiz. Brittany Nicole Shukart. Bridget Elizabeth Smith. Theodora Stark. Dorothy Teresa Steinheis. Antone Lariasa Stiles. Sharon Rebecca Stubblefield. Kelly Elizabeth Swanson. Alexis Adija Thompson. Nakia Ladone Thompson. David Eugene Topper. 
Carolyn Gervais White. Rachel Marie Young. Rakib Fanta. To all the students receiving the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of Science degrees, we extend our heartfelt congratulations. Now students who have earned the degree of Master of Arts or Master of Science will advance to the stage. Dr. Deborah Franklin, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences and Business, will announce those receiving their degrees from the School of Arts, Sciences and Business. Gwendolyn Evering Baker. Shaban Rita Cooney. Maureen Kelly Cromer. Lorena Dion. Emily Ann Dow. Charla Lynette Folks. Valerie Chantel Green, Shabnan Izadi, Virginia Marleda Cabezas, Rosemary Grace Natividad, Ishoe Kizi Omorui, Linda Lee Haran. Mary Kathleen Haran, Brianna Morgan West, Amanda Lee Wisniewski, Aaron Nicole Gales, Megan Elizabeth Wood, Dr. Thrift, Acting Dean of the School of Education, will now announce those who have earned a degree in this school. Sherwin Francis Alconis. Megan Nicole Alexander. Hanin Ahmad Aljuhani. Sarah Saeed Alsubi. Ashley Nicole Ashman. Kathleen Banerjee. Amber Lynn Baxter. Tracy Lynn Bentley. Veronica Sock Burke Stresser. Pedro J. Bermudez. Joy Ravia Bivens. Bonita Mary Blessin. G. Park Bowinger. Kendra Renee Bracey. Mine Lynette Braswell. 
Kamisha F. Brown. Jennifer Dossett Brumbelow. Stephanie Denise Bowie. Emily Hope Caballero. Sarah Elizabeth Camilleri. David Michael Carlisle. Courtney Jalen Carr. Turian Leslie Carter. Juliet Mugnaya Casanova. Raven Lee Chapin. Carrie Allison Claus. Susan Linda Lindsay Conboy. Veronica Marie Cook. Sandra Wanger Cosentino. Gabrielle Louise Cusado. Allison M. DeMellon. Amanda Dudley McCleary. Valerie Lauren Eckerd. Erica Nichelle Edwards. Colleen Catherine Everett. Brittany Catherine Fugate. Oscar Gerald Feaster, Jr. Martin Scott Figolas. Figolas. Lisa Ann Galati. Katherine Page Gartner. Amanda Nicole Fessenden Gemski. Curtis Shante Gibson Watts. Jonathan Howard Godek. Lori Ann Zales. Nancy Virginia Gonzalez. Geraldine Kail Goza. Jillian Christine Grapp. Brittany Lynn Groom. Lisa D. Guth. Catherine Margaret Haynes. Brianna Hall. Rachel A. Hall. Beth R. Hancock. Ian Harrison. Morgan Anita Harder. Lindsay Alexandra Hayward. Colleen Tierney Healy. Kristen Olivia Hilberg. Belinda Ann Holmes. Amy Lynn Horn. Ashley Elizabeth Bubeka. Santina 
Barbaro Yanoni. Nina Renee Johnston. Rosalyn Hope Jones. Cassidy Ann Keller. Kelsey Jane Kinnear. Mary Shelley Darling Knack. Molly Crow Labriciosa. Courtney Nicole Long. Katie Lynn Lohman. Emil Ryan Martinez. Griselda Martinez Valles. Amadeus Maitai. Catherine Matulonis. Chanel Monet Mayo. May Reed Rose McAllister. Taya Dolores Miles. Angelo Leo Minaldi. Kimberly E. Morales. Emily Ann Mordini. Erin Elizabeth Morris. Melody Ann Naduni. Andrea Lee Nettles. Jordan Lee O'Connell. Casey Christine Owens. Denise Lila Parker. Maria Teresa Payne. Ashley Monet Pearson. Margaret Elizabeth Peterson. Emily Aaron Pfeiffer. Crystal Michelle Pocasangre. Tyler James Pruitt. Nicole Lynn Roffer. Michael Ryan Ronhel. Allison Rees. Christina Marie Reynolds. Kelsey Faye Richards. Brianna Monet Johnson. Ayana Loray Richardson. Jessa Reitzik Rosenberger. Stephen Emerson Ross. Ashley Ann Rostek. Monica Ann Roth. Christine Marie Ruskowski. Sharon Tessawa Saku. Megan Rose Shepherd. Bridget Conway Sika. Emily Catherine Sleer. Emily's aunt, our own provost, Sister Sharon Sleer, will assist Dr. Yam with the conferring of Emily's diploma.
Allison Page Southwick, Aja Dania Spinks, Kimberly Adrani Stevens, Casey Lynn Stuckey, Rachel Lynn Stump. Jacqueline Elizabeth Tamburo. Shelby Lynn Tebow. Jasmine Santos Thompson. Derek Christian Wall. Colleen Hogan Wampler. Sarah Elizabeth Ward. Morgan Hanweller, Duane Watley, Colleen Klosky Wilkerson, Kia Rebecca Felder Williams, Kirsten Elizabeth Adair Wilson. Melinda Lee Wilson, Reslin Z. Wilson, Meredith, Meredith Joyce Wyatt. Next, Dr. Sabita pursued the Associate Dean of Graduate Programs in the School of Nursing will announce those who have earned a Master of Science in Nursing. Thank you. Michelle Lynn Atherton. Lanika Rochelle Branch. Jessica Louise Brzezinski. Shernique Tenshell Butler, Heron Carrier, Danita Tamara Custis, Christina Jennifer Ewing, Patrice Folks, Lisa Danette Harris. Allison Sophia Jenkins, Joan Daphne Jones, Cynthia Marie Knezic, Natasha Monique Maith, Morgan Lee Maltzby, Julie Kristen McMurray. Antoinette Marie Mugar, Taika Murphy, Rebecca Jean Purog, Terry Lynn Perkey, Joseph William Reinhardt, Amber Reyna. Annette Sims. <laughs> Lynn Renee Thomas. Denise Marie Weinecke. Tammy Williams. Dr. Gary Thrift, Acting Dean of the School of Education, will now return to announce the Certificate of Advanced Study in Education Award. Althea Latrice Parker.
to all graduates receiving the Master of Arts and the Master of Science degrees, and those receiving their Certificate of Advanced Study and Education, we extend our heartfelt congratulations. <laughs> Doctor of Pharmacy graduates will now advance to the stage. You will be hooded by Dean Annie Lynn, Dr. James Colhane, Dr. Lindsay Christ, Dr. Valerie Hogue, Associate Dean, will announce your names. Olufumilola Adebanjo, Janet Oluakemi Akenduro, Cesar A. Bejarano Garcia, Charlene Sadistrati. Abidemi Grace Dada. Harriet Mboni Daraja. Fritz Mome Demano. <laughs> Lindsay Marie Diantino. <laughs> Linda Huang. Alicia Candice Diet. <laughs> Nahed Hussein Elias. <laughs> Obehi Pauline Essene. Kyle Scott Gunlock. <laughs> Quinn New Nguyen Ha. Magna Cum Laude. Shannon Shireen Har, Magna Cum Laude. Elliot June Ho. Mika Thu Fung Hong. Mashita Jean Lewis. Fatima Kayatian Parvizian. <laughs> Tu A. Lee. Farah Moia Luzon.
Claire Sand Sandrine Claire Umboyo. Myreen T. Mijan Barea Kung Aure. Kiyong Eric Moon. Fortunate Mwanaka. TBK Ezaniah Ndwaya. Ben Nguyen. Fuang Mi Nguyen. Wing Fung Nguyen. V Tung Nguyen. Mohammed Ubed. Jasmine Chinir, Jasmine Ugonma Chiniri of Foha. Alexander Ojanison Olumise. Micaela. Micaela Mailari Palma. Sonia So Young Park. Tui Jong Fan. Alison Moniz Plummer. <laughs> Josette Martinez Pono. <laughs> Jay Ying Q. Cum Laude. Zeneb Raza. Bella Sarjo, cum laude. Tiffany Jean Sherrod Harris. Dorlet Jampu Somtia. Monique Patrice Spears. Yohan Su, cum laude. Shelby Lynn Tomaselli. Juan Kai Boon. Syria Diana Wesley.
Jessica Marie Wiley. Alexander Edmund Wong, cum laude. Melody G. Yoon. Congratulations to all our Doctor of Pharmacy graduates. Would the Doctor of Philosophy graduates please advance to the podium? You will be hooded by your committee chair, Dr. Susan Harkness, Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, will announce your name. Dr. Harkness. Jason Edward Bowman. Elizabeth Lay Fair. Andrew Carl Freeberger. Passed with distinction. <laughs> Linda Susan Gronberg Quinn. Allison Leigh Jackson. Heather Ryan Christine Wooldridge passed with distinction. Congratulations to all our new PhD students. Congratulations, graduates. I'm sure you are feeling immense pride in all that you have accomplished. As I look around the room today, the arena, I can see joy and admiration on the faces of those who have encouraged and supported you on your academic adventure. Parents, spouses, grandparents, children, friends, faculty, and staff members. Graduates, take this moment to celebrate and thank those special people in your lives. Please stand and offer them your applause.
To honor the achievements that this occasion marks, Mayreem Mejan Barare, class of 2018, was nominated by her peers and faculty to address us with special remarks. Thank you, Dr. Sleer. Good afternoon, President Yam, distinguished trustees, school sisters of Notre Dame, Dr. Love, faculty, staff, families, friends, and a heartfelt congratulation to the graduating class of 2018. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me the privilege to be part of this great accomplishment. I want to start by asking what comes to your mind when you think about time? What does a minute mean to you? An hour, a day, perhaps a month or a year? When I think about time, I think about opportunities. I think about the opportunity to live every second of our lives to the fullest. And Notre Dame has supplied us with many opportunities we might not have had available anywhere else. My time at Notre Dame of Maryland University was full of opportunities that made every second count, every second worth it. I still remember my first day in school. It was a brand new place, a brand new experience. I remember being so afraid of speaking English and so afraid of people not even understanding my name. But all it took was one class for me to realize that I was part of something bigger than that. My eyes were open to a world full of opportunities and I took each and every one of them with an open heart. Notre Dame allowed me to discover myself in ways I never imagined. It allowed me to see the potential, to recognize the passion and the drive in me, allowing me to give back to others what was being given to me. And what did I receive at Notre Dame, you may ask? I received trust, encouragement, guidance, and most importantly, I received the chance to use my time in an impactful way. I formed relationships that will forever be part of who I am. I found a family, a family that carried me and lifted me up when times were tough. And I'm sure that each of us has felt that support, that community here at Notre Dame. For me, one of my hardest times was September 20th, 2017. Maria, a category four hurricane hit Puerto Rico, my home country. Puerto Rico was devastated and the destruction was imminent. I lost communication with my family for an entire week and it was starting to become difficult to fall asleep at night. However, it didn't take long for the Notre Dame community to come together faculty, staff, and students, showing solidarity and providing support to me and others affected by this tragedy. And that is what Notre Dame is all about. Notre Dame is all about learning not to take life for granted, about making the most out of every moment, every second we're provided, about building strong character but compassionate leaders for the world. But the true beauty of my journey through Notre Dame was that all I gained serve as a tool to inspire others and make a difference in people's lives. Because that is how we turn experience into purpose. A purpose that we will carry with us. A purpose that will serve to change and shape our futures. Class of 2018, this is the time for us to look back to a few years ago and transform our Notre Dame experience into purpose. This is the time for us to take each and every lesson and each and every one of our successes and each and every downfall and use them to transform the world. This is a time for us to utilize the strength we've gained as the moving force that will help us face the challenges of tomorrow. Because our influence does not end here. Our time continues on after this day. As we appreciate and value every step of this journey, it is now our duty and responsibility to continue as lifelong learners to continue to help the underserved, to be the voice for those who are silenced, to take risks that will allow us to see life differently, but also that grants us the courage to stand back up and try again when we stumble. It is our duty and responsibility to have the humility to accept that we will make mistakes and have setbacks, but knowing that we will learn from them and use them as building blocks for our dreams, for our purpose. And when we look back or ahead into the future, we always think there's a lot of time involved in the process, right? A lot of time has passed, but a lot of time still needed for us to achieve our dreams. But what about today? What about this dream, this milestone that we have achieved today? 
We are here today because we have utilized our time at Notre Dame purposefully and intentionally. We've overcome tremendous challenges, rising and rising, because our purpose has a higher meaning. Never intimidated, never doubting that we have the power to trace and carve our own paths. And now more by who we are and at our diversity. Not only the diversity in skin colors, preferences, histories, and accents, but diversity in our thoughts and ideals that makes us unique and carries our essence. Margaret Mead, an influential cultural anthropologist, once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. We are that small group from Notre Dame at this time. We are our own time and our own moment is now. Let us always remember those that have been there for us since our first step, supporting our small group, our community. Some are sitting here today witnessing this magical moment. There are also those that were there for us but are unable to be here today. And then there are those that were our greatest motivation all along to succeed in our time. Family, friends, partners, staff, faculty, and mentors. Anyone who believed in us, who possessed faith in us, who sometimes saw in us more than we did ourselves. Thank you remains too short of a statement to express just how grateful we are for your continued support, understanding, and encouragement. You helped us grow into the best versions of ourselves, and today belongs to each of you just as much as it belongs to us. We owe the success of this adventure to you. We learned that this landmark was not a one person's job. We needed you and you were there for us. Congratulations, class of 2018. I challenge you to fly as high as your wings will take you and to always find your way back to Notre Dame to contribute to its growth like it contributed to yours. Represent Notre Dame wherever you go. Take pride in who we are where we've come from, and where we're going. Continue to carry the message, the mission, to pass along the energy you feel today, inspiring others, believing in them, and always moving forward. Time does not wait. It does not stop or warn. Looking back at the last four years of my life here, I realized that time flies, but that we are the pilots and Notre Dame was the air. Remember this time, because you never forget the first stone of the foundation of your home that beautiful and strong home that we have become thanks to our time here at Notre Dame. Thank you and congratulations, Notre Dame Merlin University, graduates of 2018. <laughs>
it is my pleasure to officially welcome you as alumnae and alumni of Notre Dame of Maryland University. Today, we celebrate with pride the academic accomplishments of all of our graduates, achievements won with discipline, perseverance, passion, and inspiration. To inspire, from the Latin, means in one sense to breathe in. In your time at Notre Dame, you have been taking in information and instruction, developing your critical thinking skills, and living out the values of the community, a community that recognizes and appreciates the whole person and our individual ability to affect change in the world. And you have already begun transforming the world through your work as student teachers in classrooms, in pharmacies, community health, and service organizations, in businesses and internships, in hospitals and healthcare facilities, on the playing field, go Gators, and in study and service work across the world. Your artwork, photography, poetry, and writing have enabled you to express your deepest truths and challenge others to think, to question, and to dream. Graduates, you are well prepared to step into your future. Notre Dame has made a difference in your life and you have made an impact on our institution, our community, and our world. Keep it coming. In the years to come, I hope you will reflect on our mission statement because it speaks volumes about what the school sisters of Notre Dame and our faculty and staff members have prepared you for. It, charge, it charges us to strive for intellectual and professional excellence. Please continue to develop your mind and soul that were engaged here and always build upon your skills and experience. Never stop learning. It charges us to build inclusive communities, whether in the United States or abroad, in your workplace or in your neighborhood or in your home. The benefits of understanding and inclusion are boundless. It charges us to engage in service to others, locally and globally. Helping others expands our world view, builds strength of character, and improves the lives of others, and therefore your own. And finally, our mission charges us to promote social responsibility, work for the common good, fearlessly and faithfully. It matters. In closing, stay connected to NDMU and carry the Notre Dame spirit with you. And let me say, you make all of us NDMU proud. Each one of you is a leader who will transform our world. Congratulations. My best to you always. Thank you, President Yam, for challenging us to live our mission to transform the world. As we conclude our program, Heather Wooldridge, class of 2018, will offer the benediction. Following that, Erin Gales, class of 2018, will lead us in singing the alma mater. The words are printed on the last page of the program. Please stand for both the benediction and the alma mater. Because the mission and charism of the School Sisters of Notre Dame is to promote unity in our diversity, this benediction includes elements and language from several of the religious traditions represented in our Notre Dame community and in the 2018 graduating class. In the name of our Creator, God, Adonai, Allah, most gracious, most merciful. In the name of God who lives among us, and in the name of Mary, mother of Jesus of Nazareth, our mother, Notre Dame, we pray. O oh God, throughout our education, you have inspired us. 
infusing our souls with the knowledge that you are the source of everything. You have promised us that you will shower us with blessings. Because we have found wisdom, we are blessed. Because we have persevered, we are blessed. Because we give of ourselves, we are blessed. From the, from the fulfillment of God's grace, we have all received one blessing after another. Now in turn, may we be a blessing for others. For those graduating from the School of Arts, Sciences, and Business, may you be a partner for those who are alone. For those graduating from the School of Education, may you be a light for those who cannot see. For those graduating from the School of Nursing, may you be a bridge for those who need to cross over into eternal life. For those graduating from the School of Pharmacy, may you be the medicine for those who are sick. May all of us assembled here today be aware of God's blessings and share them wherever we go by saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. With that peace, we, may we go into the whole world to live the good news of God's compassionate love to every creature. Together, we raise our voices and say, Amen, 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Heather and Aaron. Family and friends, please remain at your seats to allow our graduates to process out and return to the assembly area. You may meet your graduates near the lobby entrances. Ladies and gentlemen, I now declare the 2018 commencement of Notre Dame of Maryland University closed. <laughs>